Okay guys, so it is partly smoky out here, so that's why I have my uh, little breathing mask here. But today is not so much to talk about uh, breathing masks or smoky areas as it is that I wanted to do this kind of fun series. I know I've been trying to start a lot of series, kind of see how they go, and kind of test pilot stuff. But um, this one I think I'm going to stick with, especially also with teaching my wife survival skills, which is a series that hopefully we will be doing more of. Ashley is feeling, feeling a bit under the weather here of late, plus we've had a bunch of things like horses, work, all that stuff kind of come on us. So <clears throat> she's been really busy, but I always make time for YouTube. So anyways, uh, this series is going to be a short series. I'm going to try and not drag it out too long. But it's something that I've wanted to do because I see a lot of uh, people talk about different survival things such as stomp or maybe the 10 C's of survivability or the rule of threes. And today I wanted to do uh, a video or start a series <clears throat> that it breaks those things down. Not just in what they legitimately mean, but what it means to apply these different skills. So the first one today that we're going to start with is probably the least common of them all but it's a survival acronym called STOP. And this is one <clears throat> that I wanted to start with because it basically summarizes survival mentality. That when you first are walking around in the woods <clears throat> and you begin to realize that you're lost or that you don't know which way you're going, uh, the first the rule is to stop. And what the acronym means is to stop. The S means to stop. The T means to think. And then the O means to observe and the P means to plan. And I think that that really can help a lot of people when it comes to being out in the woods and realizing, oh my goodness, you know, I'm out in the middle of nowhere or I don't know this area that I'm in. And so when you stop, you do want to, <clears throat> so when you apply stop, these are the types of things that you want to kind of keep in mind. So applying the first letter in the stop. So when you do realize that you've gone astray or you don't know where you're at, the first thing to do that you really do want to stop or do is stop and I know this sounds kind of funny and really like I said it's beginner basics but it's really important because what a lot of people do and it's very common in survival situations when people get out of their element and they don't know where they are it's to continue to move continue to walk continue to run around and that actually can make you, if you don't know what you're doing, that can actually make you more lost than when you started. So the first thing to do is to stop, you know, lay down your backpack, throw the backpack down so that you're not, you know, burdening yourself with this heavy weight. And, you know, just take a moment to breathe deeply and just really consider, you know, where the last trailhead was where you kind of started off being lost. When was the first time you realized, oh, hey, I don't know where I'm going, or this kind of doesn't look familiar. And this does kind of lead us into part two of stop, and that is think. When you do stop, you want to begin to think about uh, not just your next actions and <clears throat> where you plan to go from here, or if you plan to hunker down where you're at, but you want to generally think how did I get to the position where I'm at? How did I get here? You know, what is my next step <clears throat> in uh, trying to get unlost or trying to get found? So that are, is the S and T and stop. Okay guys, so now we have the last two acronyms of the word stop. And if I adjust my knife here, <laughs> but there are a ton of ducks up there. Okay. So as we address the last two letters of stop, the O and the P, which is observe and plan. Now observe really means, I think it's probably the best of this, or <clears throat> besides from stopping, like whatever you're doing, stopping that. Aside from that, ob observation is probably the next most important thing. And that is to really take a look around you and observe where you're at. Because sometimes if you take a look around you, what's kind of funny and sad in a lot of survival such in situations nowadays is that people aren't really as lost as they think they are. Now it's true some places especially like Alaska you can get hundreds of miles all around you where no one is around you. You can get like a hundred miles away where there's no one around you, no human life for a hundred miles in all directions. So in that direct or in that that might be a little bit different but in observation you want to focus on two primary things. 
The first is trying to observe, is there any way out? Do you see anything? I also like to think of observation being not just with your eyes, but with your ears and your nose. Do you hear anything? Do you hear the sound of traffic? Do you smell you know, any type of thing? Do you smell like a four-wheeler exhaust? Do you smell vehicle exhaust? Because those types of things, while you may not, I have in the past been able to smell the exhaust of like a four-wheeler when I was out, you know, walking around. Now, granted at that time, I wasn't lost, but you know, those types of things where if you smell a four-wheeler, well, then you should probably go that direction. Or if you see some, you know, type of trail clearing or cutting, you should probably move that direction. Or if you hear a vehicle, or if it sounds like there's a highway nearby, then you'll probably want to gravitate toward that direction. So for me, when I think about the stop or the observe, it's a full sensory type of thing. Now, the next part of observe, because I think there's two parts to it, is looking at your land. Now you can tell kind of behind me, not so much here, but there is a lake right over here. So I observed that there's waterfowl out there that I could probably, if I was in a survival situation, I could hunt that, those waterfowl, those ducks or I could uh, try and throw something out here, throw a line out here, cast it, and see if there's any fish in this lake. Or if nothing else, I can boil and purify the water that's in this lake. So I observe those three or four things from the lake. I look around me and I see that there's, you know, like willow here. This can make really good shelter. There's also <clears throat> different trees around me and different plants, like a little bit over there when I, where I filmed the intro, there's woodland violets, which a woodland violet, while it's not the most tasty thing, is a very edible plant. There's bluebells out here, or mountain bluebells out here. I've observed uh, many different types of things that I could potentially use if I needed to, aside from my, just my backpack. So observation is those two kinds of things where not only do you want to observe to see if there's any way out, but if you truly know that, you know, there's no getting out, I have to hunker down in this area, observation plays the part of saying, okay, well, here's what's around you. So now, plan. Planning is also pretty important too. Uh, once you've observed your surroundings and you understand by thinking, uh, of you know like where you're gonna go from now planning is a really important part because like I said planning is how you arrive to okay I don't hear any vehicles I don't see any roads now it's time to plan to stay so that's when you would start to your observation be like okay so I can start using this water for these things I can start using these natural wild flowers for edibles I can you know use these uh, trees for shelter I can set up uh, an area somewhere around here that's dry and I can start moving, progressing my life and start having a little survival set up and wait, at, wait it out for help to come. Or planning can also say, hey, I hear vehicles, I see this trail over here, let's give this a shot and see where that leads us. So that's the type of planning and what it kind of boils down to. So hopefully this has kind of helped uh, shed some light on the STOP acronym for survival and kind of breaking down the mindset for how to use STOP in survival basics. Now, like I said, this video is pretty basic, but I wanted to do really super basic things that are more of the kind of mindset. So in the next episode, we're gonna be going over the rules of, or the rule of threes. And in the video after that, we're gonna go into the five and 10 C's of survivability. And as we progress in this series, we're gonna to start to apply these things like the 10 C's of survivability into building a small kind of survival kit because the ultimate preparation before going out into the woods, as you guys can probably tell what I'm gonna say, the ultimate thing uh, before getting into a survival situation is being prepared for a survival situation. So if you think you're going into a place that might require that, it's best to be prepared, like having a backpack or even just a small little day kit. And I know that's really popular, even with myself, you know, I have a little PSK because I don't honestly, this thing's cool and all, but I don't want to wear around this big clunky backpack all the time. Sometimes I like to just have a little pack that has survival essentials in it. So anyways, guys, hopefully this is enjoyable and please let me know if you guys would like to see more of this in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, that's all for now. God bless and I'm out.